Welcome, everybody, to the NFL Show on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. I'm your host for the NFL Show, Mike Goodpaster. Right now, I'd like to welcome in my co-host. First up, from the FF Face-Off, the best fantasy football show around, Anthony Servino. How you doing, Anthony? I'm doing awesome, guys. How are you? All right. And, of course, as always, our NFL beat writer, Sam Teets. How you doing, Sam? I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks for having me on. All right. So, we got a few new proposed things from the NFL owners for the CBA. One is to go to a 17-game season and cut down to three preseason games. Anthony, like it or don't like it? Um, I don't like it. I, I don't like it for a few reasons. Number one, it waters down the regular season a little bit more. Um, and if you think about the teams who would have made it this year, Pittsburgh Steelers, um, you know, on their fourth quarterback, Los Angeles Rams, who are very inconsistent, got smoked by Dallas. And then the next week, they lay an egg. Um, so I think it waters it down a little bit. They're going to omit a preseason game and add another regular season game to a regular season where your top guys, it's hard to keep them on the field anyway. I, I just think it's a money grab for the league. It was definitely a money grab. And that's grab, all Sam. it is, is a money grab for the league. Yeah, Sam? And not to mention, you there's only one bye team. So you have your top seed in each conference getting the bye. Well, I haven't even brought up the playoff everybody... format. You're running ahead of us here. <laughs> We're just talking about the okay. 17 no, games I'm... into three preseason games. <laughs> we haven't got to the really bad stuff yet. Uh, Sam, adding another game, taking away a preseason game. You good with that? I don't mind the preseason cut down, but I absolutely don't like adding a game to the regular season because, I mean, we talked about teams can't stay healthy as it is. Look what happened to Philadelphia. Look what happened to Seattle down the stretch. Seattle lost their top three running backs in the course of two weeks, I think, because of injuries. So these teams already can't stay healthy as it is in a 16-game season. Now you're expanding it to one more game. I just don't see – we're not going to get to see the best football come playoff time because the best players are not going to be on the field consistently. Yeah. So for me, I just don't like it because I think it actually makes the playoffs worse. Yeah, and, and we talked about making the playoffs worse, Anthony, and I know you don't like this, at least from your opening statement, but they are planning on adding two more teams to the playoffs, one in the AFC, one in the NFC, and it does mean only the top seed gets a bye in the first round, and it would have meant this year that, I mean, the Pittsburgh Steelers at eight and eight, and the LA Rams, who were nine and seven, would have won it at last week. A win away from making the playoffs, and it's also possible here, Anthony, that you could have had an eight and nine team make it in the AFC. Yeah, um, you know, if you think about what they're promoting. It's the three wild card games on Sunday, three on Saturday. You, you know, it makes the end of the regular season that much more exciting. I, I just don't, I don't buy it. I think they're trying to um, sell the fans on the hot button topics because it does sound really good until you really dig in and you're going to get a watered down product. Yeah, I mean, we... look at the NBA. Look at the NBA. What a, it's eight, ten teams make it to the playoffs, and it's well, meaningless. It's eight. it's eight teams at each one. Right. It's 16 teams, so it's about half the teams. This would mean right. about half the teams make the playoffs, Sam. It's too much. And this year, for example, you would have had an AFC wild card or the Pittsburgh Chiefs at the Can or the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just a slaughter. Like, I'm a Steelers fan. And I know other Steelers fans are saying, hey, if we even we make the playoffs, we're just dead in the water week one anyway. So why does it even matter if we make the playoffs or we miss? So, obviously, I want them to make the playoffs. But the point is, if you're just going to get killed that week anyway, which is what would have happened, then what's really the point? What are you playing for? Why are you doing that? You're already beat up. You're already injured. Do you really want to see Devlin Hodges make a start in the playoffs? I really don't think so. That's not what fans want. This is the NFL just being greedy. Yeah, and I think it's what this usually comes down to. And what we see, Anthony, 
Major League Baseball has done it, and they're wanting to expand the playoffs. And it all comes down to TV money because the more playoff games you got, the more regular season games you got, the more TV money you can extract. Yeah, I mean, not only TV money, but think about the why the owners individually are for this is because, you know, the extra revenue you get from an extra regular season game, and then if you make the playoffs, I mean, it, it's all a money grab in the stadium, parking, concessions, um, you know, it, it's a money grab for everybody except probably the players. Well, that's how it always is because – this is all about the rich billionaire owners that want to get richer. Because when you look at the CBA, I, I think they want to move the NFL players from getting 47% or of the revenue to 48% of the revenue. And if they add the extra regular season game, they'll give them 48.5%, Sam. Yeah, it's not a huge boost when you look at percentage-wise. It is about $5 billion worth of revenue. But at the same point, you have to consider where that money is going. It's going to the top players, not so much the bottom-level players. So the guys who really need that money aren't going to get it anyways. And even, like we said, even if the guys at the top get it, a lot of them are probably going to be injured by the time we hit the, the point of the season that actually matters anyway. Well, so we're not going to get the season. So what they're saying is they're going to give the current players an increase to 48 and change percent. Well, 48.5 if they agree to move to 17 games. It'll be 48 But if you think about it, they're not, are they really gaining anything? Because they have to play an extra game. Yeah, I know. The extra game gets them a half percent of revenue. Right. And, you know, it's not like with the, you know, preseason. Who, nobody plays in the preseason. Nobody significant plays um, in two preseason games. And even the, the, the two in the middle, weeks two and three, your starters are playing a half. Yeah, and I think the problem is you're going to have teams with losing records in the playoffs. I mean, you just are. I mean, the Steelers, who were not very good the last two years, would have made the playoffs the last two years, Sam. Yeah, and like we said, I, I'm a serious fan, and I admit, based on how we played, we didn't deserve to make the playoffs. Like, just we shouldn't have been there. The playoffs, like we talked about, is with other things in sports, like the Hall of Fame. The playoffs are a time for seeing the best teams and the best players perform at an elite level. And you water that down when you bring in mediocre teams who really don't deserve to be there. And what if, what if, because we've seen this before, what if one of the mediocre teams end up going on a run, winning the Super Bowl, and in the regular season, they, you know, let's face it, let's say they played like the Cowboys. And I'm not saying the Cowboys. Yeah, you are. It always just, comes back to the Cowboys yeah, are, are going to the Super Bowl now. They were a, a mediocre team. They couldn't beat anybody with a winning record. Um, and then they go. They just get hot and make a run. I, I, I just Is that the best team in the league? Winning well, the Super Bowl? Actually, they would be if they ran through three games. I mean, we've had teams become the Super Bowl champion from a wild card before. But right. the thing is, the worst wild card record to make it to the Super Bowl was nine and seven. And my problem is a team that's seven, or if a team that's eight and nine, could make the playoffs now. And I just, I think it waters it down so much that there's a problem there. Why not just let everybody in then? But you start, there, like Anthony, you brought up the idea of a team making a run, but. For every time that, that happens, there's probably another 20 to 30 times where you just get a team that gets blown out right away in the first round of the playoffs. Right. Yeah. So, so I think we all agree it's a bad idea. Yeah. And the thing is this, these sports from baseball to basketball, I, I don't think that it's – I mean, it's not a coincidence – that these sports seem to lose their importance even more as the decades go by because they water themselves down and they make them less legit than what they were to begin with. You know, I I remember growing up in 1975, the NCAA tournament was 32 teams. Hell, the NIT mattered back then. And then it eventually, it rises. And I mean, before the 32, it was like 24, before that 16. 
They keep expanding it. They keep expanding it to grab money. Now, at least in the NCAA, it takes 68 teams, but there's over 300 teams vying for 68 spots. So that's still, what, 20% of the teams that are making it to the NCAA tournament. The problem here, NBA, but the NBA has kind of almost always been like that, at least since I've been alive, where half the teams are making the playoffs. The NHL, half the teams make the playoffs. And the other thing is, if you've only got one team with a bye, games that might be somewhat important playing for that number two spot are going to disappear. So you may have even less games that matter when you get to that last week. And you may have guys rest their players, more teams rest their players, headed into week 17, 18, whatever they call it, because you got a playoff game the next week. Well, you could even potentially see a situation where guys are resting their players for two weeks in a row at the end of the season, depending on what their seeding might end up being. Because if you can't get that number one seed there, you can't get that bye week, there's a chance that you could lose two games in a row and still hold that two or maybe just drop to a three, and maybe you like the matchup when you get that spot. So it really doesn't – I mean, it makes it a lot less competitive at the end of the season there. Yeah, because the point is this. If the Ravens are 13-2 and two, and the number two and three seeds are 10-5, and five, what are you really playing for? I mean, sure, you're playing for home field in the divisional playoff, but you got to win the wild card game first. So you got to worry about that more than anything else. I think it just throws that uh, to to think that the games are going to be more important. I don't think that's necessarily true. And we've only seen one team with a losing record or a 500 record win a playoff game, right? That Seahawks team that beat the Saints. Yeah, and it was on that miracle run by Marshawn Lynch. As it is, I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like it was a clear blowout victory and like that. It was a close game. Yeah, and we've seen close games, but my point once again, teams that are 500 are 500 for a reason. As Denny Green used to say, you are what your record says you are, and if your record's below 500, that does not speak playoff team to me, Anthony. No, no, it doesn't. Um, right. I, 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 I hope the, the, you know, it can stay the way it is. All right. I don't mind. I don't mind. You know, I don't watch baseball, but I get it when they added the wild card game. Baseball's a long season, 162 games. Maybe in that case, more is better. But with the NFL, I, I don't think more is necessarily better at this point. Yeah, but the problem with Major League Baseball, you got a really long season, and now you let two wild cards in, and you give them one game to play, and that's it. And baseball teams are supposed to be built for series. So the better team can get beat there because – Maybe I've got three stud pitchers, but I had to fight to get in that wild card game, and all of a sudden I'm starting my number four guy against the other team's number one guy. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, I mean, I, I would be all right with that wild card series if it was best of three, but now with Major League Baseball, they're talking about adding a couple more teams to that, making a best of three, and everybody, one team gets a bye, because when you add the best of three to four more series, that's 12 more games of possible TV money you get. And it all comes down to that all the time. And I understand that if you're an owner, you want to make money. But after a while, how much do you dilute the pro or d dilute everything so that people stop caring as much? And in the case of the NFL, I think one of the real commodities in the NFL is how few games there are. If you look at the other leagues, there are so many games in baseball and basketball that you say, oh, I, if I miss one game, what does it really matter? It really doesn't because you can come back and see them play another 200 to another 80, 80 times. It doesn't matter. But in the NFL, there's only 16 games. You want to show up for every game. You want to see every game. If you keep expanding it and expanding it, then eventually it gets to the point where people don't care if they miss a week. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. I, I feel like that's part of the, like, the allure with the NFL. That's why you stay up for Sunday night football after watching 10 hours of football and all those hours of pregame because it only happens once a week uh, where you have that football day. Yes, they play games on other days, but you have that once a week type of type of deal. There's only 16 or, you know, 17 of those weeks. It, it's special. And I think adding anything else to it, it, it is going to take away and, I know football is, is at the peak right now, and I think it could still 
you know, keep going on this run, but start making changes. And I think people could, and I can't believe I'm saying this, I think people could begin to lose interest if, if, if something like this happens and it's a failure. Well, we see it. You know, when you talk about this moving teams to England and overseas, I, I think they could very quickly um, put an end to this run the NFL's on. Yeah, and if we look at it, most sports have had a run like that. I mean, like we talked about before, Major League Baseball and boxing were the two big dogs sports-wise, and that kind of died late '80s, early '90s. And I mean, they were their own worst enemy with baseball. You had the steroids. You had a ton of expansion, which watered the game down. Um, with boxing, you had basically all these organizations come in till you don't have one champion anymore. Why did they do that? Because there's more money in having three champions. But the problem is it dumbed it down so much people stopped watching. DMBA. After you get past the late 80s, mid-90s, it dropped off huge. Expansion. Because expansion is what kills this. Because you water down a NFL or an NBA or a Major League Baseball every time you expand. So if you have six more teams right now in Major League Baseball than what you had in 1975, that's what, 150 to 180 guys that are playing right now weren't even good enough to play back then. And you've just put all those guys into this league, and that's why you see baseball teams with pitchers that would have been, you know, Class A or 2A guys that have ERAs now of five still staying on rosters because you have to fill those positions. And <clears throat> I, I just think that their own worst enemy. And in 1975, when I was eight years old growing up, if you'd have told me baseball would get the ratings for the World Series now that it does and it would be basically a regional sport, I'd have thought you were crazy. If, as I was watching Muhammad Ali fight Leon Spinks at the Silverdome on network television, and the, the ratings for that fight, two billion people around the world watched it. That was half of the world's population. If you would have told me that I would be coming up in 40, or 40, 45 years later on a heavyweight world championship fight where the two guys were undefeated, one was from England and a white guy, and the other one was an African-American black man, and they don't even think they can get a million pay-per-view buys, in both instances, I would have told you you were crazy. But you look 40 years later, and that's what it is. They're both basically re they're both regional niche sports, and those were the two big dogs at the time. When we talked about this the other day about the XFL, when we said the XFL needs to move slowly because that's a league that, you know, they might be tempted to expand, but they shouldn't do that. As it is, the talent pool is limited with the XFL. So they have to be careful. I think always need to be careful about doing this kind of stuff because you take away some of the, I don't know, some of the magic of the sport essentially because it's a different level when you do stuff like this. Yeah, it just dumps down the product. It spreads it out and it cheapens it. All right. Let's talk about the Cleveland Browns, because they're always fun to talk about. Greg Robinson was arrested for allegedly possessing 157 pounds of marijuana and can face up to 20 years in prison. Um, Anthony, do you think there's any chance maybe he was planning on selling it, or do you think he was going to use it all himself? Uh, probably distributing it. <laughs> Distri I, I, I would say that. Yeah. All right. I mean, that, that's, a well, you know, that's a lot of weed. That's a lot of weed, even for a, even for alignment. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Anthony, he had, he, had a, he had a friend with him, though. Maybe they were going to split it. Yeah, and the friend was what? Quinn Bray, who was also on the Browns. Correct? Yeah. Because I think they arrested him I don't know both. They both got arrested. I don't know if he's on the Browns at the moment, but I know well, he went he to school at Auburn. Yeah. Well, I would say this. I mean, do you think that maybe those 157 pounds were for the entire team just so they could deal with being Cleveland Browns? And if it was, do you think maybe they should be let go? Because <laughs> it would suck oh, to man, be a I Cleveland don't... Brown. And the yeah, bad thing is Robinson, Robinson's a 27-year-old tackle, Sam, who is an unrestricted free agent this offseason. Why would he think that he has to be a weed dealer? I don't know. Like, that's what we were saying. Like, what do you think you're doing with your life at this point? You're going to make millions 
and millions of dollars this offseason. I mean, he's not a good offensive lineman. Don't get me wrong. He's not a good guy necessarily. But, I mean, in the NFL at this point, you're looking for left tackles. A lot of teams need him. They'll pay a lot of money for him. He'll make 8 to $10 million a year or something like that, something ridiculous. So, I don't know why you would – even if they're doing something like this, like it just doesn't make sense to me. You're going to make that money in a couple of months. Yeah. Anthony, I mean, is this basically players just thinking they're untouchable because they've been basically raised to do whatever they want because they could play a sport? I, I think this is just, I, I don't know what they think. I don't know if they actually put a thought into some of their actions, especially something like this. Yeah. So maybe it is arrogance, maybe, you know, and I hate to go here, but you never know, you know, is this that they come, were they raised like that to where, what's the word where they have to, you know, where they have to trap? Is that the word trapping? Trapping? I don't know. Tra- Sam, you know, you're, you're, where you're hustling and that's where uh, you come from. I hate going there because people who come from money are also selling drugs. Well, yeah, because people who come from money also think they can get away with anything. Because usually you can if you got money. But I, I think that Greg Robinson may have some issues here. Um, Alex Van Pelt wants to change Baker Mayfield's mechanics, Anthony. Can Alex Van Pelt help Baker Mayfield? <sighs> I, I don't know if it's mechanics or maturity. I think I'd be trying to change Baker's level of maturity than his mechanics. Well, you know what I would try to change, Sam? I would try to maybe change the off-field distraction since this dude is in the news constantly. Right. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm a Browns coaching staff, I want him to be away from the media, away from – the limelight for an offseason, and I want to see legitimately what I have in Baker Mayfield. I want to do an analysis of what Baker Mayfield, the quarterback, can bring me in the future, and I want to know where his head's at. Because if he's not going to be productive in a year or two from now, if he's going to be the same guy he is, then i got to start playing for a long-term future, and I can't focus on him anymore. Yeah, and I, I will tell you this, though. With Alex Van Pelt, he is right about one thing. Because he wants to change Mayfield's foot placement in a shotgun before the snap. And this has always drove me nuts. And Mayfield played for Lake and Riley, who's a really good coach. I don't know why Mayfield was allowed to do this all the time. But he wants to switch Mayfield's lead foot from his right foot to his left foot in a shotgun. And, you know, it allows the quarterback to play with more rhythm. And Van Pelt is right about that. So that actually is something that I think could be fixed that would help him almost immediately because I mean, if you think about it, if you're right-handed and you're in the shotgun and your right foot is forward, you're kind of cattywampus when you catch the snap, where if your left foot's up, all you got to do is kick that right foot back. You get into your three-step drop a lot quicker. And I've always wondered why with his mechanics that nobody ever changed that before, Sam. We've talked about before. Sometimes if you're good enough, guys will overlook what you're doing wrong, and they'll just try to roll with you like that. And maybe that's what it's been. Maybe coaches have been afraid to tell Baker Mayfield, who was the number one overall pick in the draft and the former Heisman winner, that, hey, you're doing this wrong. You need to change here. Anthony? What? What's I? I, I, I lost. Oh, geez. Come on. What are you doing over there? Are you hanging out with Greg Robinson? <laughs> <laughs> He'll be on the show tomorrow, by the way. Um, no, we're just talking about his footwork. And in the shotgun, he has his right foot forward. And that makes no sense to me, and it never did. And I never understood why nobody ever changed it before. So you, you're saying you think it's because no, it's, it's because of what? Well, Sam said it's because since it was, yeah, they're they're afraid to say, or my guess is this, and this is my better guess, is they let him do this all through Pee Wee and the high school, and the first time he got a coach that tried to change it, Baker probably said, now, I always did it this way, I'm more comfortable, and everybody just left it alone because they don't want to piss Baker Mayfield off. I mean, it's not like, you know, he was a walk-on a few times. It's not like he, he just rolled through and he was... Uh, like a top guy. 
Well, my guess is in high school he was, though. At his high school, if you know what I mean. But, or you're actually right. So this is all on the coaches. This is Lincoln Riley's fault. And whoever the quarterback coach at Oklahoma is. Because actually, to me, when I watch him, it actually stands out big time that he does this. And I, I know I brought it up on our draft show a couple of years ago when he was drafted. And everybody kind of blew it off. But I, I think it's a huge deal. So I, I think just by seeing that, I think Alec Van Pelt may be able to do some stuff to help him here. But in the end, the only way Alex Van Pelt is really going to help Baker out is by getting him traded to a better organization. Hey, that's, the, that's the only way you can help Browns. That's the only way you can help the Cleveland Browns, man. You just get them out of there. Yeah. So what do you think, Anthony? About who this, who this falls on? No, we're just talking about Baker Mayfield and Van Pelt. And do you think Van Pelt can help him? I still think his biggest issue is maturity. So until that becomes a focus to somebody, I don't know. I don't think he can help Baker Mayfield. But see, As a I, number one person, it has to be a priority for is Baker Mayfield. Well, I, I think well, this, though. If you have a coach that's going in and telling him he's got to change the way he does things on the field and he listens to him, I think that means that he's more open to you telling him to change things off the field, and maybe he's more open then also. So the thing is this. The first time I coached a professional football team, all right, I coached a defensive line. My defensive lineman played at the University of Cincinnati. Two guys, they played in the Orange Bowl. Um, they were coached by Brian Kelly. My third guy played for Jim Trestle at Ohio State. If you can go in and just show them one thing that makes them better, they will automatically listen to everything else you say. If that makes any sense. No, I, right, no they, believe, they believe in you then. They believe that you can help make them better, and so they're willing to listen to you. Yeah, because most of these coaches are cookie cutter. They just tell the guys, oh, that's great, that's great. They pat them on the ass. They let them play football because they want to keep their jobs. But if you can actually tell somebody that has played at a high level something to help them, they will know that you know what you're talking about. Because let's face it, I wasn't at Ohio State you know, when I went to college. I was at Indiana State. That doesn't get quite the respect that playing in the Big Ten or the SEC does. Which could be told by the time we played Florida and they beat us 79-28. to 28. We were happy because we scored 28 points. So, I think the Cleveland Browns are a mess anyways. Um, what else we want to discuss, guys? Anybody got anything else? Uh, How about the Ezekiel no, Elliott no. comments about Dak Prescott, Anthony? What did Zeke say? Because I've heard a lot about what Emmett Smith has said about That's what Dak. I meant. Why did I say Ezekiel Elliott? Emmett Smith. These aren't new comments. Emmett said this, I believe, on Pro Bowl weekend or right around the Super Bowl. So I, I don't know why it's all of a sudden a, a, a big headline now. Because the same um, reason Joe Burrow is, because they don't have anything to talk about right now. I think Emmett has a point. I also think Emmett um, could be, you know, trying to do Jerry and the organization a solid since he was a holdout himself. Uh, a Super Bowl winning holdout, a little bit different situation. But he's 100% right. You know, if Dak wants to win a Super Bowl, he's going to have to give Dallas some kind of a discount so they can put better players around him. And because the Cowboys are so marketable, he can make it up an endorsement. So I don't hate what Emmett's saying, but I do question his <laughs> um, his motive well, and I where think, it's coming from. I think he's full of crap because he was all about himself when he played. He didn't take less right. money. He held out for two games in 1993, and the Dallas Cowboys were 0-2. And it basically made them give him whatever he wanted. So I, I don't see how you could be Emmett Smith and talk this crap when you weren't able to walk it yourself, Sam. Yeah, I, there's certain players that I don't want to hear anything about when it comes to regards to money. 
Like, if I'm Dak Prescott and I'm the former fourth round pick of the Dallas Cowboys and I'm sitting here looking at the amount of money I could potentially be making here, I'm not taking a massive cut in my money to make it for the Dallas Cowboys and Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones has plenty of money. The Dallas Cowboys have plenty of money. I'm not the guy who's going to make sacrifices in this case. I don't have to. I'm 26 years old. Now, maybe, of course, if you're putting – if you're putting the Super Bowl in the forefront of your mind, I don't know that every 26-year-old is. They believe they can play for another 10 to 14 years. But if you're putting the Super Bowl at the forefront of your mind, then yes, you should probably consider taking a pay cut. But, but that's it's, your decision to make. You shouldn't be told that by anyone else. I don't think this is a question of if Jerry or the organization has money and if they want to spend money or not. I think it's a question of salary cap and having to sign other guys because unless Dak um, – is delusional. Dak needs help. Why would Dak be delusional? Because Dak wants to get if he paid doesn't what think he's worth. He needs help to win. Hey, let me answer help. you this. Let me answer you this. Uh, let, let me ask you this. Um, Dak's first three or four years was he underpaid big time? Yeah. For the way he performed. All right. So why shouldn't he expect to get his money right now? You know, if, if something happens to him. Where, you know, when he's 50, he can't remember his own name. Nobody from the Cowboys is going to come take care of him. They'll do it like an E60, and Jerry Jones will be on there crying about how great he was, and he'll give him a check for 50 grand, and everybody will say what a great guy Jerry Jones is. Screw these owners. Jerry takes care of a lot of his Jerry doesn't take care of anything, but Jerry. Jerry takes care of his guys. Yeah. Why don't he take care of his, you know, the bill on his stadium? Why did he hit taxpayers with half of it, which is five hundred million dollars? I, I, I don't know. Yeah, so don't give me this. Jerry is a great guy. Ask Jerry's wife or ex-wife but, if Jerry's a great guy. I I don't think Jerry was ever divorced. No, but he did cheat on his wife. Well. And, and also and this. Sure how about this? The taxpayers. How many players? Wait a second. The how? Didn't play for the Dallas Cowboys. The taxpayers what? They didn't play for the Cowboys. No, they were basically just forced to pay money for the Dallas Cowboys stadium. Was there a vote on that? Yes. There was. I believe there was a vote, and they wanted to. Oh, okay. Yeah, because they wanted to. So what was the percentage on the vote? Because my know. guess is there's up. 30% of the people that didn't even vote or that, that probably voted no for the stadium to do not care about football. And I'm sorry, but they shouldn't because it's they just... shouldn't live in, they shouldn't live in Fort Worth, Dallas, Texas. You okay. Don't care so about wait a second. So where you, you shouldn't be allowed to live somewhere because you don't like football. I'm just saying. Well, you're being facetious. I know. But the problem is this. I mean, it can be funny unless you're like a Chargers fan and your team was taken from you because you weren't willing to pay for the team that some billionaire asshole owns and won't pay for his own stadium. You know, this country right now is built on greed and corporate welfare, basically. And that's what he got. The final... The final vote was 55 to 45, and they agreed to a half cent sales tax increase as well as raising taxes for car rentals and hotels to pay for the stadium. So who's renting cars and hotels is people coming to watch the game. So the people that come to watch the game that fly in on their own money that want to see the Cowboys game if they're a Cowboys fan have to pay again. I think that's bullshit, Anthony. I, I don't think taxpayer money should ever be used to fund corporate welfare for owners that have billions of dollars. And, and I mean, you don't think that, that, that the new stadium was a boost to the economy? They've no. had Final Four. No, They've I had really, WrestleMania. Really WrestleMania wow. alone is a, is a billion-dollar weekend. Sure it is. I mean, all I know is this. How much stuff is held there? And you know uh, what? If if that is such a great thing, why didn't Jerry just want to pay for it himself so he could keep all the money? I, I don't know. I'm not his uh, financial advisor. And I will also give you this. You cannot <laughs> compare Dak Prescott to Tom Brady. Tom Brady's wife, you know, earned has a net worth of 580 freaking million dollars so what we all sit around to say tom brady is this great guy for taking less money all these years 
Hell, his wife makes more than he does. He doesn't care. So, yeah, it's more important for him to win. But for Dak Prescott, he needs to get paid. I mean, Dak Prescott is a damn good quarterback. He deserves who made, what he gets. Who made $50 million from endorsements? And I'm, this is per an article, foxbusiness.com, September 2019. $50 yeah. million. So can you tell me again why he should give some of that money to Jerry Jones? So they can sign players to help. Okay, wait a second now. Wait a second. If I'm Dak Prescott, second contract. dude, so you think Patrick Mahomes is not going to get his max contract? Patrick Mahomes won a Super Bowl. Dak yeah. won a playoff game. So you're saying that Matt, Patrick Mahomes doesn't need to, about, need to worry about winning anymore so he can worry about himself. No, if, if Mahomes, I'm just saying Mahomes has more of a right, more of oh, a bargain. Oh, bullshit. You cannot tell me that I don't have a right to earn what I want in a capitalist economy. And if you can't pay me, I'll go somewhere else. That's what Dak Prescott's saying. So if you don't think you could win the Super Bowl of Dak Prescott, why are you going to re-sign him at all? Uh, what are the other options? We're going to go back to this. What are the when, options? Uh, there was a report this week that Teddy Bridgewater wants thirty million. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So shouldn't this is what Dak quarterbacks get forty? Shouldn't Dak get forty? That's not what I'm saying. You're saying that he shouldn't get paid it. I, I think every with the way things are, you're saying. Um, then why are you going to pay him all this money if you don't think you can win a Super Bowl? You're not winning a Super Bowl with Teddy Bridgewater. Brock Osweiler got seventeen five a year as a starter. You well, you know what? With, with I hate to tell you this, Anthony, but I watched the Philadelphia Eagles win the Super Bowl with Nick Foles. Uh, I, and, and I'm telling you I, this, if you went with Teddy Bridgewater and you used extra money to buy a this is the thing. In the NFL, the teams that predominantly win, is this true or false, are the teams that draft the best? Correct. All right, so even if I pay my quarterback a lot of money and I draft really good, I'm still going to be fine. You know, John Elway and the Broncos won because, not because he necessarily took less money, but they drafted Terrell Davis. I mean, right now with the Dallas Cowboys, the problem is you have a greedy owner. He doesn't care about anybody but himself. He will kick some money to the pheasants to play for him to make it look good, to buy their loyalty. But overall, he doesn't care about anything but himself because, once again, he'd have paid for the stadium himself and collected all the funds that was that great a boom for Dallas. Yeah. I mean, how, how often is it used? How often is what used? The Cowboys Stadium. I, I would say a lot. A lot? So, it could be, uh, what? Probably one of the most utilized stadiums around. Yeah. Hmm. Not to mention whatever AT&T spends to have their name on it, if that's even the stadium name anymore. Yeah, but who gets the money for the stadium name? Probably Jerry, right? Probably Jerry. So, if once there was again. No, but, but, hey, but I, I think can... Jerry's trying to save. I, I think I don't think he's trying. I think it was up to Jerry, and there was no salary cap. They, they'd be the Yankees. Yeah, and they would still lose because Jerry's an I idiot. I think he just wants to put the best team out there possible within the cap. Well, all, all I can tell you is this. I, I think the Cowboys... And the city of Dallas probably are making money out the stadium. But I still don't think that fans should, or, or, you know, in Hamilton County and Cincinnati, the taxpayers got screwed. And a lot of taxpayers did. And that was all on the NFL and what happened with the Cleveland Browns in 1995 and 96. I mean, you had a precedent set where the city of Baltimore wanted a team. They talked to the Bengals. They talked to the Browns, talked to a couple of other places. And that precedent was set, so the next 15, 20 years was basically corporate welfare for rich, old, white dudes to own professional football teams. And I, I just, I think it's crap. And you know what? I, if I'm Dak Prescott, 
I mean, your life expectancy is like 15 to 20 years less if you're playing professional football. I want to get paid. I want to get paid what I'm worth. If I'm Tom Brady and my wife's worth $580 million, oh, hell, you can pay me $17 million instead of $30 million. That's pretty easy. So everybody wants to deify Tom Brady for this. But Tom Brady's wife was already worth a half a billion dollars. It makes things a little easier. I mean, hell, if she divorces him, he probably gets half of her stuff. Sam? That sounds like a side defeat. Like a what? It's not a side. I, I mean, I, we could just keep going on this. There's no way to keep going on it because, you know, he just wants to be paid what he's worth. And if Teddy Bridgewater is going to get $30 million, Dak Prescott ought to get 35 or 40 Then what's Patrick Mahomes going to get? And if, when Patrick Mahomes gets it, I'll guarantee you nobody says Patrick Mahomes should take less so the Chiefs can build a team around him so he can win more. And I'll also tell you this. Patrick Mahomes is good enough. He's going to win either way, probably. So, I don't know. I just think the corporate welfare stuff pisses me off. I don't know why billionaire owners need to get taxpayers' money to build their own personal what stadium. What does this have to do with that? Well, it's what it has to do with everything. The fact is this. Jerry Jones didn't have to, but he decided he was going to look out for himself so he didn't have to pay for all of his stadium. Dak Prescott's going to look out for himself and get the money he deserves. So I don't know why Emmett Smith, who basically held the Cowboys hostage in 1993, has a leg to stand on. He needs to keep his mouth shut. Well, I have I have no respect for somebody that's going to come out and rip a player for getting what he what he thinks he deserves when he did the same damn thing. Uh, I don't know if Emmett, you know, if, if he was getting paid that type of endorsement money, maybe he was. No, but this is the thing. With inflation, he probably was because the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> were actually good back then. With inflation, he probably was. But the thing is this, did anybody ever scream that Troy Aikman should take less money? But I mean, wasn't it a why? different era with, free, you know, they, their heyday was, uh, you know, was maybe a year or two in the free agency when they scooped up Dion, they won their championship, and then they haven't won since. Well, they haven't won since, because not because, I mean, they didn't win because they had Dion. They won because they had Jimmy Johnson, and they let him go. And that was about ego. Well, they and all this is about ego. Oh, wow. And the fact that it's about ego, Jerry Jones should understand and just be quiet and feed Dak Prescott's ego. Because as long as Jerry Jones owns his team, there's no way to win a Super Bowl. So you might as well make as much money as you can if you're Dak Prescott. Can I get an amen, Sam? Amen. Thank you. If I, That's if, my... if I was, I would tell Dak, listen, you know, you could take fifteen million dollars less over the course, twenty million dollars less over the course of the contract, and I'll call my friends over at Pepsi and get you fifty, and then we're going to take that twenty-five, twenty million, and go get you a new left tackle, a safety. Okay, wait a, a second. Receiver. Wait a second. So what you just said is you want the Dallas Cowboys to cheat to win. You want them to game the system because I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's illegal. Uh, you cheer for the Houston uh, Astros also? <laughs> I mean, basically, what you just said was you want him to take less money, but you're going to slip him more money under the table, and then you're all going to shut up he, about it. Jerry's not slipping anything. Pepsi is. Yeah, through Jerry. Because you just said Jerry would tell him, and then I'll hook you up with Pepsi. Anthony? What? Yeah. Look, if, if you think, like, it doesn't I think that's anyway. illegal. I'm pretty like sure, it Sam. It happens. It Sam, happens. is that illegal? 
I'm, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. It sounds pretty illegal to me. I don't think that's right. Yeah, and then <laughs> when you tell me it happens with Jerry, it just makes me wonder. I'm sure it happens all throughout the end of the week. It's oh, well, I'll tell you what. I'm sure it happens all throughout Dallas Cowboy land. And the thing about the Dallas Cowboys is, how many Super Bowls have they won? Five. 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 Since 1960. So they win an average of one every 12 years. Is that worth it to cheat all the time? I mean, you're a Bengals fan with zero, so is it? You know what? I would rather have zero than have one that has gotten the way the Houston Astros got one or the way the 49ers got one when they gamed the system back in the mid-90s. What, when they wet down the field and uh, so Emmett couldn't run? No, I would say more the way they got free agents, hid money, and acted like they weren't paying them as much. I don't know. You've heard of that one, haven't you, Sam? Eddie DeBartolo. Yeah, Yeah, that's why they banned him from the league. Didn't Trump just pardon him for something? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Trump don't even know what he pardoned him for, but he pardoned him because they're buddies. So when you look at it, what the hell? And all these guys, and see, everybody rips Donald Trump, but all these guys pardon their buddies. But I think it was like 2000, right around there. And, and you had some other questions in the mid-90s. Because I, I know that DeBartolo, I think, or Carmen Policy was fined for violating, they violated the NFL salary cap. Um... And if I remember right, I think it was off of Jim Druckenmiller's contract that they violated. How bad is that? At least it wasn't Giovanni Carmazzi, whatever the hell his name is. I mean, Druckenmiller was worse because he was a high first-round pick, wasn't he? So, there you go. Plus, you also had the PED gate scandal they had in 1989. There were three times between 1989 and 2000. So, you know, this is the thing. I, I, I just, I, I don't see how you can tell a player in a game that is as violent as football is that he shouldn't try to get his money. You know. I mean, if you look 1994 with the Niners, just look it up. Um, uh, the the sal- get this, the salary cap in 1994 was 34.6 million dollars. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, and they somehow had uh, with a 34 million dollar signing cap for everybody. Um, they still had they had enough money to sign Deion Sanders. And seven other key free ac- agent acquisitions, six of whom went to the Pro Bowl. And they were never punished for it. So, really, that should have been Dallas's fourth Super Bowl in that uh, time span. No, because the thing is, the Cowboys were probably doing the same thing. They had a lot of Pro Bowlers, too. And the thing is, this it would have been Dallas's third, followed by Dallas's fourth, if Jerry Jones was an egotistical prick. But he was, and he got rid of Jimmy Johnson, and the rest is history. Now your Cowboys suck, just like the Bengals. And if yeah. you don't think they do, let's do this. It's 2,000. How many times have the Cowboys made the playoffs? Not, I, uh, not a lot. I would probably under 10. Okay. I, I, I don't know this for sure, but I would guess that since 2000, the Bengals have been in the playoffs more than the Cowboys. And the only thing you can come back with, how many you won? Well, you beat the Detroit Lions on a BS call at home where the Lions were the better team and beat you, basically. I mean, and I'm not going to come back with anything because I think Cincinnati had a night and they didn't win. But, I mean, they had better quarterback play up until Tony Romo. Hell, they had better coach. No, no, up till Tony Romo. Tony Romo's yeah, not as good as Cowboy, Carson Palmer. I mean, they had Bledsoe for a minute, but up to that, they they after Troy, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a good look. Yeah, but if we go Maddie, if we go from, they had Carson Palmer and Andy Dalton. That that's not uh you know that's not terrible. 
And Palmer is much better than Tony Romo. Well, Carson Palmer played. I like in, them both a in. lot. So hey, I'll you know go. what? He was a Bengal, but Carson Palmer played more NFC Championship games than Tony Romo did. Yeah, that hurts. Sam, are you still there? I'm still here. Okay. I was going to say Dallas and Dallas and Cincinnati both made it seven times since 2000. Since 2000, they've both gone seven times. And Romo, Romo is remembered for that one good year in 2014. Everyone forgets that before that year, Tony Romo blew almost every comeback opportunity he had, I feel like. I remember there was a time where – my dad's a giant fan. I remember there was a time where we could count on Tony Romo to turn the ball over in the fourth quarter for comebacks to happen. It was like clockwork. Yeah. So there you go, Jerry. Or I almost called you Jerry, Anthony. <laughs> You really need to consider picking a different favorite team, Anthony. It's just embarrassing it's for embarrassing. us here at the show. I'm too loyal for that. I need to pick a new team, too. And then Sam's a Steelers fan. That just shows his lack of IQ. Sam, any final words before <laughs> we go? Uh, no, you can just find me. You can find me on Twitter at Sam underscore teach 33. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook, so feel free to go check those out. Anthony? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at the Real NFL Girl. You can follow the show at the FF Face Off. We can be found at all the top social media and podcast platforms. And tomorrow at one o'clock, we've got the first ever NFL mock draft, where me, that Cowboys fan, and Sam will pick <laughs> who we think each team's taking in each round of the draft. Make sure you listen in tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern, live, or you can hear us anywhere you find podcasts afterwards in podcast form. You can follow me at Grueling Truth. But for now, for Anthony Servino, Sam Teach, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.